Hey everybody, it's Joy Halstead for Soapbox, and uh, we're going to have a pretty fun time tonight, um, but it's also serious as well. Um, we have some, some issues we need to discuss, but right now I'd like to uh, talk about our underwriters who help keep the show going. Uh, the first one is Pieces Pizza by The Slice. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is including low-fat, vegan, gluten-free options, as well as fine selection of beer, wine, and soft drinks. We thank them for supplying pizza for the crew. They're on 21st near <clears throat> Capitol Avenue in Sacramento. And also, the Humor Times, it bills itself as the funniest news source. The monthly political humor magazine is available worldwide by uh, subscription in print or digital format. More info along with cartoons, funny fake news, videos, and more can be found at Humor Times. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we're on Facebook, so please check us out at facebook.com slash soapboxsack. And give us some feedback and make some suggestions. And be sure to check out our past shows on our YouTube channel. Just put in Soapbox Sacramento in the search box. We hope you'll comment on the shows and share what you find. And last but not least, we'd like to thank our volunteers behind the scenes who make each show possible. And they're wonderful, and we're glad to have them. So tonight, uh, the subject that I wanted to discuss, and glad to have my guest here, is we're talking about um, Mayor Kevin Johnson getting pied, but more importantly, why? And my guest tonight is Sean Thompson. Um, he happened to be the person that was involved in this, and you know he's got a lot of um, a lot of information and as to why this went down, and you know where his heart was during this you know this whole venture and you know what what is going on at this point in time with the case you know that you can't really talk about too much, but right. we just want to know basically. What prompted you to do this? Um, well, I, uh, I've been a political activist for just over five years now. In fact, we Occupy just celebrated their five-year anniversary, and so about that long now. Um, in that time, since the beginning, I've been going to city council meetings and uh, watching how the city council has conducted themselves and what policies they've been speaking on and trying to create um, different ordinances for. and and most of it has been about them trying to push the arena and Mayor Johnson trying to push a strong mayor initiative. Um, and very little of it has been about them trying to help the disenfranchised uh, citizens of Sacramento, the, the poor, the working class, the homeless, and um, other such groups who, who the city council and Mayor Johnson does have the power to help in a lot of ways, but they just don't. So. So over that long period of time, I've just grown really frustrated with uh, his policies that haven't helped us at all. And I think I hit my breaking point finally when it was time to put a pie in his face. Okay, yeah, and I mean, um, it's, it's been really difficult because I know um, one of the things that really you know, started off more people coming to the city council meetings was the right to rest movement community dinner project and <coughs> it's like it's like well Kevin Johnson would rarely even show up if he you know he may make an appearance and you know give somebody congratulations for something and then leave right and I mean I I don't understand that it, it just seems like he could just he wasn't interested in what was going on in his own city other than to make more money to help you know, get people wealthy, you know, with right. the, the investments that they could make in this city that went with the arena. There's, there's been dozens upon, upon dozens of, uh, of activists and even just average citizens who, who show up every Tuesday at 630 to the public forum for the, the city council. And they speak on, you know, all different, a whole array of issues. But what we've seen over and over again is Kevin Johnson um, occasionally looking at the people he's talking to, but mostly typing on his laptop, probably trying to get work done while he's there, 
and and even leaving the city council meeting early oftentimes um, he never really seems interested in what people are trying to come and, and say and voice their opinions and, and give feedback. And that's what the whole city council meetings on Tuesday nights are about, are about the city council connecting with the citizens of Sacramento, listening to our concerns. And him and all of the city council who've been there since about 2012, um, they've, they never seem to want to listen. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a few city council members who've been, who are newer in there. and. They seem a little more in tune, but that's just, you know, a couple of them. But don't you feel like a lot of his behavior is rubbing off on them, too? <sighs> I feel, <laughs> of course. He's the mayor, so yeah. he, he's sort of the ringleader of the show. And, right. uh, and, and also, because he's the mayor, he should be the one who's paying the most attention, but he just doesn't. He, do, he obviously doesn't seem to pay attention, doesn't seem to care, um, and it's disheartening. Mm. And it it makes us feel like you know there's this disconnect between us and our leadership who have the power to to make better laws that's their position right. to make society better and they just don't and it's really sad because you know they have this the, well the arena went down really badly <coughs> i mean people didn't have a vote on it or a say i mean and right. that alone was just just horrible the way that backroom deal went down and and i want to speak on that because um i've had a lot of people come and try to talk to me about the pie incident and a lot of them are are under the misconception that one kevin johnson has done a lot to rise up oak park he he's really invested in oak park and he hasn't when he campaigned for mayor back in 2008 he had one property that he, he did fix up and he did make it nicer. And he gave us the impression he's going to do that to all of Oak Park. And after he became mayor, he didn't do that to anything else in Oak Park. He, he didn't bring it up at all. He barely invested in it, if at all. And um, people don't realize that. And the other thing is people are under the misconception that... Uh, that his arena deal really was a good deal. And he throws out all these talking points like, um, like it's gonna bring bus business to Sacramento to Midtown. It's gonna bring more people who are gonna eat out and that will put more money in the local businesses in Midtown. But the fact of the matter is that there's gonna be a ton of little, a, a bunch of businesses inside the arena that will be taking business away from the businesses around Midtown as well. Right. And also that um, the arena is just going to suck money out of the hands of Sacramento and put it into these already millionaires' hands who are, who are running and owning the arena. Yeah, all the, these, um, these to builders mention, that are making all these luxury apartments that none of this normal people can afford. Exactly. You know, and then, you know, our homeless problem, they've completely ignored it, but the homeless people are still there. Yeah, they are. And you know what? I hope that, you know, I hope people notice the fact that, yeah, we have a homeless problem here. Mm -hmm. And now that we're going to have more exposure on the area, it's, it's, they just think like it was going to go away or something, but it's not. It's right. gotten worse. Now, when Kevin Johnson, just after he became mayor, Oprah Winfrey herself did, uh, did this report on the homeless problem, specifically in Sacramento, right. California. The, the uh, tent city. The tent city we right. had here. It was an epidemic because the crash of 08 and, uh, and so many people lost their jobs and couldn't pay their rent and went homeless. And these were average people. But as a society, you know, we become kind of neglectful of problems that aren't our problems. And so we just write them off as, oh, the mentally ill, alcoholics, um, they must have done something to deserve their position. And they didn't. It was just, it's just a bad economic time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who are good people and who are hardworking people had to become homeless. And, and so Oprah Winfrey came and put a national spotlight on this. And of course, Kevin Johnson, you know, whenever there's a camera around, Kevin's around. And uh, he came out and said, oh, I'm going to do everything I can, everything within my power to really address this problem. And not only has he done, he's done very little, um, but he brags about the little he does. He brags right. about the... Uh, he he the, blows it up. Yeah, the few thousands of dollars, the, the eight new um, bedrooms he's opened up for the homeless when we have over 6,000 homeless people, you know. And, um, and he... Him and uh, Councilman Ashby, they specifically get this disgusted look on their face when activists come forward in the city council meetings and try to speak on homeless issues and mm -hmm. try to say, we need to do more, we can do more, we can do better. But they, it seems like a problem that 
they just want to go away. Well, and they would rather just jail them, you and, know, mm -hmm. and take all, whatever little belongings they have and toss them away. Right. With them, no chance for them to retrieve the only belongings that they have, the little that they do have. And then, you know, they process them and they're back out on the street again. Right. I mean, it's like this revolving door. It's not solving the problem. Not at all. In fact, uh, in the time that we've been paying attention to, uh, to the activists have been paying attention to Kevin Johnson and the city council, um, they actually created an ordinance that you're not allowed to feed homeless people in, in certain areas uh, that are highly homeless person occupied, you know, that... Mm -hmm. uh, that there's a lot of homeless people right around city council, right, um, I'm sorry, the city hall in Cesar Chavez Park. There's always been a lot of homeless people there, and then they made rules you can't feed the homeless there. So and, we're uh, doing it anyway. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, James Clark, he's a local activist, he uh, started the, the community dinner project, um, and it was straight rebellion, you know, he set up tables in the areas where you're not allowed to feed the homeless and had this big potluck and lots of people showed up to donate food. It was really exciting and lots of homeless people showed up to receive food and it was a really good, peaceful, positive event. But the police came in riot gear just to move our tables, you know, 40 feet or so is out of the area away right. from City no, Hall. I was there. Oh, yeah, you remember that. <laughs> yes. So I have pictures, I have video. Right. Um, yeah, it was kind of a joke. They had to move the table like 10 feet. Yeah, yeah. it was ridiculous. Yeah. But, yeah, and I mean, now Cesar Chavez Park, we have, um, I'm losing, his name just totally slipped my mind, but he's a wonderful activist, and every Sunday they're Armando. out there. Armando. Yeah. They come out to Cesar Chavez Park, they have clothes, they have food. Every Sunday morning, at, you know, I guess before 8 o'clock, they're there. Right. And I mean, it's so amazing to me that they're just so dedicated to this. Yeah. And, you know, the people want to help. Mm -hmm. why, does it, why don't our leaders see that as like a positive thing and try and like ride that, you know, and, and just do enough to get the problem under control and, get, you know, get people the help that they need? Right. I think that the leadership, the, specifically Kevin Johnson, a lot of what he does, and it just seems to me, is he's looking for return on investment. So it's all about the dollars and, you know, how much can we get back for we're, per we're spending. And he doesn't see that if you invest in bringing these homeless people up and making them working, productive, housed citizens, then you're not spending money on arresting them. You're not spending money on homeless programs and food stamps and welfare and everything just to to try to keep these people at their bare minimum level. You, other cities, Seattle and, uh, and I wish I could think of more cities off the top of my head. Salt Lake City. They've created, you know, small homes for the homeless, um, right. how, housing communities for the homeless where they each get their own home. They don't have to pay for it. And that gives them a place to store their food so they can eat better. It gives them a place to store nice clothes so they can go to job interviews and, and, and go to work. And a place to sleep. And to sleep. And so they can be rested, productive citizens. Right. You know, and that's, and once they're there, once they're, you know, they have jobs and because we've created jobs and once they have housing because we gave them housing and they're giving back to society again, then that's their return on the investment. Absolutely. But Kevin doesn't seem to see that. No. And it, it's, it doesn't. You know, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure that out. But it's obvious that his his whole reason for being was to make that arena. It, and it's just, that's all he's talked about for as long as he's been and, mayor, and is the arena. a world-class city. Ugh, yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, we're a flyover town, you know, we're, we're doing better. We're, we're the capital of one of the greatest economies in the world. Right. And, uh, and we can do so much better than we're doing. Well, he should be embarrassed. I'm sorry. I've told him that so many times. It's just, and it will become more obvious over time. What's, <laughs> and, and, and history will, will show the truth of what's been going down for like the last eight years. It will. And what I'm afraid of, though, because, you know, he's... He's already said he's not going to continue to be mayor after the end of this year. And uh, what I'm afraid of is that the economy here in Sacramento is going to start to decline as fast or faster than it has been because now we're paying into this giant expensive arena and it's not going to be the, the great, you know, the great 
investment that we thought it was. It's just going to suck money out of Sacramento, well, and they're going to have to pay back the arena through parking fines, which they're already starting through raised parking hours, which yeah. they've already started through light um, rail tickets, light rail tickets, which they've increased the police for the light rail yes. through more expensive light rail, which light rail is supposed to be, you know, a transportation for those who can't afford transportation. Right, and now it's free for the people that don't need it. Right, <laughs> exactly. And um, and even worse is, as uh, someone who's worked in property property management for almost 10 years, I've noticed a significant, significant increase in um, homeowners receiving uh, fines from, from city code enforcement. And I think that's directly related to the city trying to rake in more money. All over, absolutely, all over. The, I mean, not just locally, but on the outskirts. Yes, definitely. Even where I live, all the and suburbs, all the yeah. rents have gone up. Mm -hmm. um, property values, maybe a little, but not as much as the rents for right. sure. Um, and it's just like you know, this arena project is going to ring the working class dry. It's going to suck them dry of their funds. And and by the time the realization of that catches up with that, Kevin's not going to be around to be held right. responsible. Exactly. Yeah. So, so you know, he's pie got to nothing face. to lose. He's right. got nothing to lose and except maybe getting more pie in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, maybe hopefully there's a few more of me out there, huh? Well, you know, I, I think it's a trend that should really continue because yeah. I, I, I thought it was um, a poetic justice, really. Thank you. Nice, nice did say that to you before, but it's like it truly just, you know, and, and he ha I don't know why he went all gangster on you, but... Um, <laughs> Dude, you know? I, so many people have come to me saying, man, that guy has some, some repressed rage well, that he unleashed. And apparently that wasn't the first time that's happened with I've him. I've heard. I've yeah. heard. I haven't done the research, but... Um, yeah, when he was a player, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I just wanted people to know you, uh, you as a person. Right. Like, you know, what your normal day is, what you do to survive, and... You know, just how you, you go about life in general. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate that. Um, so, I mean, most of my being is dedicated to activism. I mean, when I'm not out throwing pies at mayors or, or <laughs> yelling at city council, um, I'm, you know, I post a lot on Facebook, you know, articles and, and causes and, and just trying to plant seeds and ideas for other people to, to take matters into their own hands. Um, and I always try to promote peaceful activism. I mean, that's for five years now, I've really been about it. But, but me as a person, you know, I, I'm a landscaper, I'm self-employed. Um, I have my own landscaping business. Um, and, and, and you're also a talented artist. I, I am. And I'm your an landscaping artist. is art as well. It is, it is. In fact, um, when I started out, I was just, you know, doing mowing lawns. And, uh, and that's all I could do for money back in the bad economy when I got laid off of roofing. Yeah. Um, but it's really grown. And now I'm doing uh, um, drought resistant, chemical free um, landscaping remodels. And uh, it's and I've had a lot of projects in, in Carmichael, Carmichael recently, and uh, and it is very artistic. I get to draft up these ideas. I coordinate with my customer, and and we both come to love an idea, and then I execute it on their front yard. Right. And, uh, and so I you're really... not just a you know, you're not just a homeless hippie. No, not I'm, at all. You know, that's the whole point I'm trying to make is like people don't realize that there is more to you as an individual. Right. You know, they're just making like this judgment and just looking at you and they don't even know anything about you. Right, exactly. <laughs> and you know, whenever, whenever you say or do something that's a little bit radical, people have these snap judgments because they don't like the status quo being broken and they like to stigmatize people who do, you know, go against the grain. And, and I do very much go against the grain. I know, and it just, yeah. I. I I know how you feel right? because <laughs> I don't get it. It's like we have a lot to lose if we don't stand up for ourselves. Exactly, exactly. But, um, you know, as someone who is, I've always admired the example of Jesus Christ. Um, I have my own opinions on that and everyone else out there does. But I've admired the example he set, which is just to, to do what's right. And to me, even though even though it scares people sometimes and even though it shakes things up and, and even though occasionally it breaks some rules, to me, activism is doing what's right. Helping the homeless, helping the poor, um, 
shaking the world view of, of rich people in government positions so that hopefully they'll make the changes that will make the world better for all of us. And well, what it really comes down to is just justice. Yeah, social justice you know? and economic justice for all of us. Yeah, and no matter what your situation, you know, we, we, we're not less than that. We're right. not. And it's, I'm so tired of, you know, it's them up here and it's us down here. Right. You know? Most, most working people, you know, we all were trying to maintain that full-time job and, and maintain our families and, and keep our houses, a roof over our head, and, and occasionally indulge in a little entertainment. But most people are, you know, one to three paychecks away from being homeless themselves. You know, right. if, if you lost your job and you didn't find anything in, within a couple months, where would you be? How close would you be to, you know, being considered just a disgusting homeless person by everybody else who didn't know you? Right. And unfortunately, I, I think there are still people that are going to end up in that situation. Yeah. And more and more, more as time goes on. Because the, the income inequality is so horrible right now mm -hmm. um, that it, it's just it's so hard to just get by anymore. Right. The U.S. has like significantly the worst income inequality over every country in the world, significantly higher. Yeah. So um, people, I wish people would get that, you know, we need to tax the rich, the, the 1% and the millionaires and billionaires. We need to tax them. It's not going to hurt them. And socialism is not a disgusting thing. It's, it's just economic justice it's, it's you know redistributing yeah. wealth that's literally just sitting in bank accounts in the Cayman Islands and bringing that back into the country and and providing services for people who are otherwise you know forced into a position of being stigmatized as leeches on society you mm -hmm. know redistribute that money and and rise up your bottom citizens and everybody rises up you know a rising tide lifts all boats. Absolutely. Well, while we're on the subject of like helping people, um, if you notice, I have this lovely T-shirt on, and it's with respect to his actions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we had people wear this at the city council <clears throat> meeting just uh, the week after you were arrested. They did. And, and I got one of those shirts too. I wish I had worn it now. Uh, well, the thing is, we're going to be we're raffling these off. Right. And there is 12 shirts to be had. So, and all the money is going to go to our homeless youth in the area. Um, they're promoting a safe space. Um, they're trying to get clothes and sleeping gear and stuff mm -hmm. for these kids. And um, it's just somebody who has taken it under her wing and really, you know, Kimberly Church has been trying yeah. to help out with this. So, um, there is a place where you can go to, it's a PayPal account, and it's going to be $5 a ticket, and um, the PayPal account, it's C-H-A-R-S-P-R-I-N-G-E-R -E at wavecable.com. And so $5, you can get on there, you can buy a raffle ticket, it's all the proceeds are going to the kids. Mm -hmm. And um, they're going to be announcing it in about a week on uh, Canna, it's C-A-N-A, -A, Accelerate, it's a podcast at 4.20 in the afternoon. So we're hoping that, you know, if you want to do something, this is just some small thing you could do. Definitely. And that's what we're all about, is like helping the disadvantaged people that, you know, they, they don't need a lot, but they need a little. And, and just whatever anybody could do to help, we'll help. Right. You know, it doesn't have to be a lot. It could be your time. It could be a sandwich. It, you know, you could just talk to people. Yeah. You know, and see why they're where they're at. You know. Right. And try to just pay attention. You know, why are these people there? Yeah. You know, learn about it. Um, yeah, I mean, they're not throwaway people. In in my time talking with the homeless and and trying to be an activist on their behalf. Um, what I found is that across the board, um, all the homeless agree that, that the worst part about being homeless is being ignored and neglected by everybody who walks by. Nobody wants to make eye contact. People want to pretend you're not there. 
and it really makes these people feel like garbage, you know, and, and I think that over a long period of time contributes to them starting to have mental illnesses of sorts. Absolutely. Source, you know? Absolutely. Well, we have a couple minutes left, and so I just want to give you the floor and say, you know, is there anything that you want to just, you know, let people know about, you know, what this whole thing is about, really? Yeah. Um, well, so when, when I first got out of jail, when I was, uh, when I had this huge media spotlight on me all of a sudden that I wasn't expecting, um, everyone was trying to make it about the pie and about Kevin Johnson, you know, hitting me. And, uh, and really, to me, it's not about that. To me, it's about highlighting the, the homeless issues and, and the issues of the poor and the disenfranchised and seeing what we can do as citizens to hold our government officials accountable and to take accountability for ourselves and, and help these groups of people. And so right now I'm working with a couple lawyers and we're going to start a not-for-profit. Um, we don't have any details really yet, but by the end of the week I'll have made some progress. Okay. And um, we're hoping to, uh, to really start a major organization that's going to create some some major shelter for them. They will offer clothing. It'll offer hot meals. It'll offer all sorts of programs for them to, you know, get off of drugs, to reduce their alcohol, and to find jobs for them. Um, there are a few programs out there already, and Kevin Johnson tries to brag about these programs as if they've really been conducive, but they haven't. And um, drop in the bucket. Right, exactly. A drop in the bucket for what we can mm -hmm. do and what we can do easily. It's not going to be a difficult investment. Right. Um, so, so we're hoping to uh, really make some headway here by the time Kevin Johnson gets out of office and we can really start something significant to, to make a dent in these problems. Yeah, and I hope Daryl Steinberg steps up to the plate. I sure do, too. I mean, Daryl Steinberg, if you're listening, please, you have, you have a very low bar that you, to rise above, and it's not going to be that hard. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sean, so much, and to be continued. Thank you. <laughs> We're still going. Yeah. And we made it. Yeah, that was great. Right.